this video, I'll show you how to use a Skahoi panel to control audio devices. Let's have a look at the setup. Today, we're showing a waveboard, Behringer X32 mixer, and VMix. This combination is not totally random, as X series mixers are often used as USB audio interface for VMix. We'll end up controlling the input channels of the mixer and the monitor channels in VMix simultaneously. But using X32 and VMix are just examples. All our Blue Pill products, such as Waveboard, can be used to control a wide range of audio devices, including Allen & Heath DLive, Behringer X-Series, Biome Tessera, Blackmagic Atoms, Digico consoles, Direct Out processors, Wizard TriCaster, VMix, Yamaha mixers, and more. Phew. You can see the full list of compatible devices on devices.skahoy.com. You'll find a link to this in the description. I've connected the devices to an Ethernet switch and set static IP addresses on all three. I also hooked up Internet access. Here's what we need to do next. Open Reactor and create a new project. Add the devices. Select Configuration and add channels. And as a bonus, add custom commands to the buttons. OK, let's get started. Step 1. Open Reactor and create a new project. We open a web browser and enter the Waveboard IP address. Now we see Reactor, the configuration manager for Bluepill. I prefer to create new projects for my setups, so I'll click Manage Projects in the window top and click Create New Project. Name it, save it, and activate it. Now we have a clean slate to work on. Step 2 Add Devices. All devices we want to control must be added to the project. In the right side of the screen, we click Add device. By default, Reactor will auto discover devices on your network if it's able to. You can also click Add device manually to see a list of all compatible devices. Here, I enter X32 to filter the list and select the X32 M32. Now you see the settings window. I enter its IP address and set a meter refresh rate. Shortly after, You'll see it as connected. Let's add a device more. Click Add Device, search for VMix, and select VMix 27. Again, I enter its IP address and click Save. Shortly after, you see it as connected. Alright, the two devices are now ready to be controlled. Please note, Device cores such as Behringer and VMix are automatically downloaded from our server. For this to work, you must have internet access when adding new devices. If you're on a closed network, you can install them manually. This is shown in our video, How to Update Software. OK, let's move on. Step 3. Select Configuration and Add Channels. The last thing we need is to assign commands to the faders and buttons on the panel. This would typically be level on the faders, solo and mute on the buttons, pan or gain on the encoders, and so on. You can build your own custom configuration from scratch any way you want. Or you can select one of the pre-made default configurations as a starting point. Using a default configuration is a fast way to get going, as they have a full set of commands, layers and logic already assigned. We'll choose the generic audio control and use its flexible way to add channels from multiple devices. Now, our goal is to control four audio inputs on the X32 and four buses in vMix. And to show you how multiple pages work, I'll also add a ninth fader controlling the VMix headphone bus. Alright, let's start with the X32 channels. To specify these, I click Channel Config. 
Here I add four new channels. As you can see, we have a long list of things to control. I'll select Behringer Meters Audio Input Channels. I want the same on all four channels, so I just click Copy below the list. Next, I specify that we want to control Behringer Device Number 1. You can also see this index number in the Devices list. The reason for specifying this is that we could have multiple similar devices. Index number is the same for all four channels, so I just copy the value. Finally, I select which audio channels to control. This will be audio input 1 to 4, so this time I enter 1 and click plus 1 to select the next three inputs. That's it. Let's check it out. All right. As you see, we have control of the four X32 inputs with fader, solo, mute, and balance all working. Now, let's do the same for vMix. Add four new channels. Assign the first to vMix Audio Bus Control and copy it to the rest. Specify that this is vMix device number one and copy it to the rest. Finally, assign master bus and use plus one to select the next buses. And you know, just to tell the channels apart, I'll make the X32 channels red and the vMix channels green. Let's check it out. Wow! Now we have control of both X32 and vMix from the same panel. Faders, mute, solo, it's all working across the devices, indicated by the colors. To show what happens when we have more channels than faders, I'll create a ninth channel. Here I select vMix headphone. VMix device number one, headphone, and make it blue. Now you see the channels are split on two pages and we have buttons to flip between them. This could of course be even more pages. Great. We have control over two different devices from the waveboard and it only took us minutes to set it up. And remember, right now we are using X32 and vMix, but this could be devices from many other brands. After this, there's only one more thing I want to show you. Bonus info, add custom commands. You may want to add just a few custom commands to some buttons. This could be vMix play shortcut A or X32 recall scene one or whatever you want. It could even be multiple commands in a sequence. You can of course do this. Just as you can build your own configuration from scratch, you can also modify a default configuration. This is done on the configuration page. Click configuration. Here we see a graphic representation of the panel. In the page button, we make sure that we are on the correct configuration and have selected the background section. OK, let's add a command. Click the button now 3 to select it. It already has something assigned, so we clear it by right clicking it and select Delete Behavior. Now it's empty and we can see all the devices we control in the inspector and can select commands from here. I'll open vMix, Other, and select Trigger Shortcut and select Shortcut A. That's it. Really simple. Shortcut A is now assigned to the button and we can see it does the fade on vMix. Let's do one more. This time we want to do two things. Recall a scene on X32 and set vMix input 1 to program. We'll use the button now 4 for this. Right click it and delete the current behavior. Open X32, Scenes and select Scene Load. The selected scene 1 is fine. Now click Add Behavior. Close X32 and open vMix. Program Preview and select Set Program. Select Mix 1 and Input 1. 
All right, let's check it out. When we press the button, both commands are executed. Fantastic. That's it. We're done. Now you know how to do a basic audio setup, integrate multiple devices, and even add your own custom commands. Please watch our other how to videos on reactor setup and configuration. You'll find links to these in the description. Thank you for watching.